Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first edition of Collider Book Talk here on National Book Day. Um, I'm your host, Josh McCuga. The last book I read was the Bo Jackson biography in 1997. It was a hell of a book, and I can't wait to talk about it more here on Collider TV Talk, which is live every day, 11 a.m. PST. Joining me today on Collider TV Book Talk is one Emma Elizabeth Ann. Petruvius Fife. That is correct. Yes, thank you for <laughs> Emma, having me well, today. And that is what's on your driver's it license. Is, yeah, We've is, seen it. Yeah, it's on my driver's license. It, it takes up a lot of space. But, you know, <laughs> as a book lover, I feel that having that much on your driver's license to read, it's just, you know, it's, it's good. It's it is. rewarding. It's really rewarding. Yeah. Yeah. You deserve all of the titles. <laughs> Unlike Jon Snow, right. you're more of our mother of dragons. Oh, yes. well, thank you. <laughs> Grace Hancock, welcome back. Oh, thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Don't uh, forget to send me your Twitter questions at Mrs. Grace Face, hashtag Collider TV Talk. And uh, hashtag it um, Mother of Ginger Dragon. <laughs> yes, good. please. Guys, I'm Josh McCuga. Welcome back for another Collider TV Talk. A lot to go uh, to get into today. MMMA May. We'll be back. Uh, Grace gave me that inspiration this morning. We've got some some spinoff news, all kinds of fun stuff for the next 25 or so minutes. We're up in your face talking all about it. Uh, Grace, what's first on the docket? All right. So first today, Fox dropped a new trailer for the new series Gifted, or The, the Gifted, the gift. um, which is like their X-Men um, show. That And actually, Brian Singer directed the pilot. It premieres October 2nd on Fox. I am really excited for this. I think this looks cool. I don't think it looks cheesy. I think it's going to be... I'm excited to check it out. Shockingly I, not about a Christmas gift exchange. No, it's not. <laughs> or, 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 Nothing? Spoiler or, alert! Or, uh, yeah. or about somebody that's particularly talented in, say, mathematics. Oh, you know? yes, I in the like gifted that's, class. Yeah, yeah, in the gifted class, Those exactly. Uh, yeah. No, I agree with you, Grace. This show, I, I think, Josh, that when we first saw this trailer, yeah. we all felt as though we weren't really sure what the show was about. Yes. We got that the kids had powers mm -hmm. and we had an They hated X showers. Right, they hated showers. We had an <laughs> X-Men thing going on. There mm -hmm. might have been some animosity towards vending machines also. No, vending machines, terrible. But other than that, it was unclear as to exactly what, show's what the plot was. Yeah, yeah it, it didn't look bad. It just yeah. looked like, uh, okay. Yeah. It, it, more confusing than right, anything yeah, else. Right, yeah, yeah. Whereas this trailer, I, I, listen, this the girl that is the main lead, she played Adam Goldberg's girlfriend in The Goldbergs, the show The Goldbergs, which I, I love. It's an amazing sitcom. Um, but I, this trailer really gave me a look. It's like, okay, the X-Men aren't around. Yep. Uh, these kids have powers. They are, you know, it's sort of like Legion. They are trying to get rid of people with powers, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I, I really like the tone yeah. Of the trailer, right? It's a little bit darker. It's mm -hmm. a little bit more seedy. Almost like... Because there's only so much you can do on network television. Absolutely. Right. And this is meant to be a family drama. Sure. So that doesn't necessarily mean they can't go to serious places. You can be serious in a family drama. Yep. It's just... It can't be... Game of Thrones, blood, guts, and gore, and everybody's right. bits hanging out. Right, right, kinda. right, right, right. <laughs> there will be no bits no. on the gifted, no. unfortunately. <laughs> no lady bits, no men bits, but, either. Yeah, um, I, I agree, though. We see in this that the Sentinel services are after them, which is mm -hmm. a thing from the X-Men of their trying to hunt down mutants, so it is definitely within kind of the X-Men world. world. Yeah. Um, and it also looks to me like this is very much, even though... Yes, it turns out that the kids are the ones who have the X gene and have powers. I don't know that the parents don't necessarily right. don't. And it looks like it's mostly about Stephen Moyer and Amy Acker, who play the parents, finding a way to keep their kids safe. It has like an Incredibles kind of a feel. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? like maybe the parents have powers, but they're, sub they're suppressing them. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada. I think this, this has a really cool thing. That I, if anything on the Fox slate that has been announced, this is probably the thing I'm most excited about. Yeah, yeah me too. Because we really haven't seen a ton. I mean, I know we got the Orville, but from what I understand, the Orville is way different than what we thought it was going to be. Which is unfortunate, because it looked funny. Because Seth MacFarlane came out yesterday yeah. and said whatever. But the gifted, you know, uh, the yeah. more X-Men stuff on TV, the better. Because if it turns out to be like Legion... Which we're is all incredible. In for a great treat. Yeah, we're all yeah. in for a treat. Uh, which again, I think kind of got snubbed uh, via the Emmys. But totally. Uh, yeah. Moving on. What's next, Grace? And then next, David Letterman is getting a six-episode series on Netflix that will premiere next year. So as we all know, in 2015, he retired from Late Show with David Letterman after 22 years. And Netflix announced that the hour-long show will combine two of his greatest interests: in-depth conversations with extraordinary people and in-the-field segments expressing his curiosity and humor. I love it. So, and the quote that he said 
when he said, why are you doing this, was amazing. Was I like, know. When you retire yes. to spend time with your family, make sure you check <laughs> you with your check family. You check with your family first that they actually want to spend time with <laughs> yes, you. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the thing that I'm most curious about from you guys is since there's only six episodes, is do you, is he only going to have six guests? And like, who makes the cut if there's only six? Well, the nice thing, I think, is that David Letterman, uh, I, there's a couple books about like the early days of stand-up, and then there's some. There's a really good book about the, the war between who was going to get Johnny Carson's spot. And I can't remember what the book was called, but yes, I did read it. It's on National Book Day. Um, that uh, that talks about you know that Johnny really wanted Letterman to do this, right? And Letterman started as a as a as a weatherman in Indiana and made his way out here. And really and truly, De Dave Letterman's stand up isn't great, but he's an amazing conversationalist and he's mm -hmm. an amazing interviewer. And the thing that gives the, them like off camera with Sam Jones, which is an audience, is a very well done interview show. Just two people. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff that you didn't get on Letterman a lot. Until like the last couple yeah. of years when he was like, I'm just going to have one guest yeah. and do him the whole time or do her the whole time. Right. That came out wrong. It did. Uh, but we know, but you, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yes. So on the Netflix show, if it's interspersed with like some of his Man on the Street stuff, which is really funny and yeah. you know, like curiosity, but they're long form style interviews with David Letterman. Amazing. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking that this will be. I mean, if you look at something like Bill Nye Saves the World, I thought they did a really nice job yeah, with that definitely. show, balancing the segments where they were on stage and there was an audience versus when you had the correspondents out in the field investigating whatever the topic was that they were covering that week. Yeah. And I think that is what the Netflix show will be. It'll be a mixture of, okay, yeah. so we have these three people on the show today and the first segment is going to be an interview with, with who guest A, and then there's going to be some man on the street stuff, and then maybe some behind the scenes in the office kind of David yeah. Letterman stuff, because they did a little bit of that as well. So I, I'm i excited about it. I think that this just sort of exemplifies this whole idea of original programming becoming Netflix's big focus these yes. days, yeah. right. which is not necessarily a bad thing because we're getting so much really great original content on Netflix. I mean, it's Letterman. Like, come yeah. on. It, there's... Nobody is a better interviewer than him. No, and, right. it, and and the cool thing is that it's only six episodes. So if he's like, I liked doing this, maybe I'll do it again. Yeah. And, in such a small order. And that is the Netflix model that they're moving towards, yep. which is releasing. They Basically, my understanding is Netflix wants to release new original content every single week. So their seasons are actually becoming shorter Genius. and more frequent. Genius. Right? It's like we didn't <laughs> yeah. know we wanted it until we got it. Yes. And now that we have <laughs> I it, want the don't beard. take it away. Yeah. Right. Right? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of room for kind of a different kind of pacing with no commercial breaks on Netflix. And yeah. you can have probably a, a lot more creative control. So I'm really excited. Yeah. And I hope the beard comes along as well. Because the beard is fantastic. Glorious. I think I'm going to grow out a beard like that. <laughs> it's Look, nice. Like square nice beard. on the side. Yeah. Nice on the side. Square here. Like a rounded yeah. square. Yeah, yeah. post-wedding. Yeah. Just yeah. go full. I mean, I think look. for the wedding, you got time. You, you can bust that out in a few weeks, right? <laughs> <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> All right, what's next, Grace? All right, so next we're going to talk a little bit about some spinoffs. 20th Century Fox TV has been developing a spinoff to the CBS sitcom How I Met Your Mother, which ran for nine seasons. And the spinoff they're working on is going to be titled How I Met Your Dad, which is confusing because it should be How I Met Your Father, but moving on. <laughs> originally, <laughs> Grace? Originally, it was the same team that was working on This Is Us on NBC, so... When that kind of took off and got really successful, as we all saw, they are now revamping it with a new team of writers and actually a whole new concept and direction for the whole series. Because they even announced a cast yeah. for the How I Met Your Dad. And I believe even shot a pilot or mm -hmm. came close to really shooting yeah, a pilot. Yeah, I think so, yeah. too. It a couple years back, along. right? Yeah, I mean, it's been in development for a really long time. And it's right. sort of a bummer, too, because This Is Us is such a good show. So I you know. feel like if the showrunners from This Is Us had made the spinoff to How I Met Your Mother, it could have really it been, been good. good. I know. It's like, what could have happened? Here's the thing, we'll never if, know. If they kept it, first of all, amazing work with How I Met Your Father, because, hey, yeah. dummies, that's what the show should be called. Yeah. Um, is if they went straight with a laugh track again, I would be signing it off. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, there's no way. I'm tuning in. Yeah. I can't do laugh track TV anymore. It's over. Yeah. Um, but also, what, this is dumb. Like, I don't understand why we need a How I Met Your Father. We already got an entire 10-year episode of How I Met Your Mother that ended, mm -hmm. for, for all intents and right. purposes, poorly. Oh, like, very it ended, poorly. It ended poorly. Sure. I watched 10 years to watch the pilot yeah. again. Right? Yeah, right. that's, and that's I, what it was. Listen, the show was very yeah. funny. I loved the show. I thought it was, I mean, Barney Stinson is one of the greatest characters. Yeah, I was going to say, Neil Patrick Harris is like great. MVP yes. of that show forever. For the gayest man outside of of How I Met Your Mother to act that straight. <laughs> yep. He did a hell of a job. Oh, and such a player. Yeah, I you know, love it. Amazing. 
You don't need How I Met Your Father. You don't need it. I, I don't understand. Yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't know what what's new to bring to the table. Like, was, a funny sketch would be How I Met sure. Your Aunt, or like How I Met Your you know your right, grandfather's but step. But as you say, wife. that's an SNL sketch. That's Correct. Not a yeah. series. It's not a series. Yeah, I think for my feeling about it is that you know because How I Met Your Mother did have such a disappointing ending. Mm -hmm from the point of view of maybe we could redeem the series a little bit with a really good spinoff. Okay. I kind of get that, but, sure. but my faith in that kind of thinking is say, so low. But a spinoff has to be so far yeah. off of what the original series was. Right. Cause I don't, I don't see this like, cast is this coming be like back. That 70 no, show. Yeah. They're not going to come back. Is no. it a period well, then, piece? Is it a period? Uh, right. Exactly. Comedy? It just takes place in the seventies for no reason. Yeah. Well, and also they they were talking about today that maybe modern family, because modern family is moving into its final seasons because they tried to develop a pilot or a spinoff a couple years ago with, um, Rob Riggle's character right. that yes. did not get past development. But now that it's kind of moving into its final seasons, are they going to revisit that and do a modern family spinoff, which I don't want. Again, we were talking before camera started rolling. You said, I like Thanksgiving. I mean, I love cranberry sauce and, and stuffing and mashed potatoes, but I don't want that every, every week. Yeah, and, I'm, and I have... So to spin I, off Thanksgiving, like yeah. you don't spin off mashed potatoes. Like you have, <laughs> the, you have the Thanksgiving meal. Don't spin me off. Yeah, yeah and let I... Let it go out. Let it be let done. let it go out on a high note. Like, yes. I'm, I'm sick of us trying to like ride the coattails of everything forever. It's like... And I have modern family... Fa family... To, like I have that fatigue right now. Yeah. yeah. Like at least How I Met Your Mother has had a lot of time to kind of like... Marinate, and yeah. I'm kind of like, oh, sure. yeah, but I don't I remember care how they show. met their father. I didn't even care how yeah. they met their mother, to be honest with you. I stopped I caring about shows. that in season two, and yes. I watched all nine seasons. I yeah. loved it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. agree. Yeah. I feel the same way about Modern Family, and agree that because How I Met Your Mother has been done for a while, there is more merit in that getting a yeah. spin off trying to revive it. But Modern Family, I think, I, I it was. It was a great show. It's not that it's not a good show anymore. It's just more of the same. Like, give it a rest. Yeah. yeah sometimes give it a rest. sitcoms just need to end. Yeah. <laughs> they just do. They do. Like, it's over. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, one of them not being Seinfeld. I mean, mm -hmm. I, listen, you could keep, you could keep <laughs> doing Seinfeld yeah. forever because it's a show about nothing with no real through yeah. line. Modern Family, like, has a through it line. It does. And well, I'm and it's like, like, how can they keep all these kids in this house for the next 10 years? I know. Like, and I they're know. like, ah, she dropped out of college. She did too. Ah, we're all just going to move in together. It's exactly. like, I don't no, care. She's a genius, but she didn't like college. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. got mono for a semester. <laughs> yeah. Christ, if I kept coming home, my parents were like, <laughs> no. get an effing degree yes. and leave. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. It's I like, also feel like this is exemplifying the direction that both film and television are trending into of we don't want to do stuff that isn't based on existing force source material and doesn't yes. have a built-in fan base exactly it's, it's all about worse the fan in base. film than it is in tv 100 percent. but i feel like tv is starting to creep into that territory and stop treading water let's yes, go into the deep end exactly of the pool here. yeah let's see we're, some good original slang metaphors crushing today. metaphors yeah <laughs> welcome to metaphor talk guys your host cody hall <laughs> cody take cody! it away <laughs> All right, what's next, Grace? We're going to go to Emma, Emma Mation. Oh, yeah. Emma, Emma Mation. All right, guys. So first on the Emma Mation docket, the news <laughs> dropped this weekend that Outlaw Star will be replacing Ghost in the Shell standalone complex on Toonami as the latter is reaching the end of its run. Now, So Ghost in the Shell is done. Ghost in the Shell. Well, I mean, it's been done. All of these series have been done for oh, a long time. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, Ghost in the Shell was airing on Toonami which is now only on Saturday nights on Adult Swim. Oh, okay. And it's reaching the end of its Toonami run. It's all on Hulu and yeah. stuff, so you can check it out other places. But it is really nice still when anime series get attention on television in addition to streaming services. Mm -hmm. Outlaw Star actually started on the Toonami block on Cartoon Network way back in 2001, right. which is when I first watched it. Outlaw Star. It's a really, really fun series. It's not uh, about John Roca. Right? It is not about John Roca. <laughs> no, no. But if you like the Joss Whedon series Firefly, you will like Outlaw Star Ooh. because though he may deny it, there's a lot of parallels. Okay. Uh, so with, do you think Joss Whedon kind of stole some of Outlaw uh, Star? I think or? there was, I think that some inspiration was taken from both Outlaw Star and Cowboy Bebop, which mm. are very much space westerns. They're, they're space operas with a very heavy western influence. Does the cowboy dance in Cowboy Bebop? Uh, no, only in the opening credits. Oh. <laughs> okay. That counts. I like yes. a good little Bebop dance. Yeah, thing. yeah. Bebop. Cowboy Bebop is a little more subtle and jazzy than Outlaw Star, and gotcha. Outlaw Star is a little bit more action-oriented. Uh, okay. It follows 
the adventures of Gene Starwind and his ragtag crew on their inherited ship, which is called the Outlaw Star. And the it's, yeah, again, this is a really good series for anybody who is not maybe necessarily into anime because it's just really good sci-fi. Yeah. So if you're into sci-fi fantasy, this is super accessible and I'm very much looking forward to so revisiting this. So is this anime? This. It is, yeah. It's anime, okay. Yeah, it's an yeah, anime okay. series. It has a very interesting art style which has actually been praised by critics quite a lot. So I don't know. Gotcha. It's, it's a good one. It's This is a really good starter one, guys. Okay. Uh, I feel like this gets left off of a lot of starter lists because they include Cowboy Bebop, and they're definitely similar. similar. Same animation company, Sunrise, but uh, but they're different shows, and Outlaw Star's great. You know what the space westerns are better than? What? Westworld. <laughs> <laughs> What I mean, than. there is a robot in this, Josh. Oh, yep. Well, yep. I'm out. Naked robot girl who powers oh, the ship. Well, okay. well, naked well, robot girl. Yeah, girls. I can go with the naked yep. one. Listen, not, listen, if they're going to be naked, I'm totally Exactly. Uh, All right, what's so, next? So, yeah, I do want to, I'm going to try to do little, you know, quick reviews of that as I revisit it, I uh, it. as that starts airing on Toonami. And speaking oh, of quick reviews, I'm going to mention My Hero Academia again, because that is such a great show, guys. It just continues to be so strong. I had so many people tweeting at me saying, thank you so much for recommending the show. I binged all of it. It's this is this is now absolutely in my list of like top 10 starter anime because it's accessible from the point of view that it's all based on Western superhero ideas. And this latest episode really explores thematically some of the ideas of what the implications of having people as professional superheroes mean from the point mm. of view of if people are being paid to be superheroes, then are they truly heroic? Oh, you know that's what I mean. Okay. So it, it was a really, really good episode. Uh, in the last episode, some of the students reprimanded one of the bad guys, staying the hero killer. But in this episode, it's revealed that based on the laws in place for professional superheroes, they cannot take the credit for it. They have to give the credit for it to a professional hero because they would basically be suspended from continuing their hero training because they're not technically officially certified professional <laughs> heroes. Bastards. So yeah, My Hero Academia is really good, guys. Okay. Uh, and you can check out all the newest episodes on Crunchyroll. And then uh, Sci-Fi Wire, which is the blog news portion of the Sci-Fi Network's website, published an article entitled Eight Anime Titles for Your Game of Thrones Fix. Oh. which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, they broke it down character by character, basically stating, if you like this character, then you might like this series. <laughs> a lot of them were pretty on the nose. Uh, okay. For example, with Daenerys Targaryen, they said, if you like her, then you would like the series Yona of the Dawn, which is also about a girl trying to reclaim her lost kingdom with dragons. Uh -huh. So, you know. I could see the connection. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You could see the yeah. connection see there. Makes a lot there, of sense. Yeah. Uh, also, Jon Snow, they recommended Attack on Titan because Jon Snow's really obsessed with defending walls from supernatural threats that might wipe out all of humanity. <laughs> and that's Attack that's on Titan. That's Attack on Titan. Also, spoiler alert, <laughs> the uh, Titans also used to be people. Oh, well. Like oh, the White Walkers. Ooh, so right you on. can definitely see the parallel there. Okay. But the one that I thought was really interesting was they suggested that if you liked Sandor Clegane, a.k.a. the Hound, yeah. then you might like the series Ruroni Kenshin. God Which damn it, not is, Roroni Kenshin. No, Roroni Kenshin <laughs> is an amazing series, okay. but Roroni Kenshin is basically about this guy who, during the war... Whose face was, was burned into fire by his brother. It was, he was not burned into oh. fire, but he does have a scar on his face. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Better, There's a parallel better. right there. Yeah. But he used to serve, basically, a master, and he was Batosai, the manslayer, and he killed tons and tons of people, much like the Hound was kind of a... A badass. Shady, ruthless killer. Sure. But... <laughs> Now the Hound is free of the Lannisters, and in Maroni Kenshin, he's free of any master. He's sort of this wandering samurai. But the thing is, is the Hound, sure, he's like a little better than when he was serving the Lannisters. <laughs> However, in Maroni Kenshin, he straight up has made a vow to never kill anybody again uh, and yeah. fights with a reversed edged sword. Oh. So it's, but that being said, even though I think maybe it's a little far fetched to draw this parallel, Roroni Kenshin is a great series. Because the Hound is still ripping dudes' guts out. That's 100% yeah. true. It's 100% cool. true. But yeah, Roroni Kenshin is a great series. Uh, every, all of the series that I mentioned are on Hulu, and both Roroni Kenshin and Attack on Titan are on Netflix. So it's very easy for you guys to check those out, and Boom. they are all really good starters. Shakalaka, Emma, Emma, Mason. <laughs> Emma, Emma, Mason. Thank you, Emma Fife. Uh, no. All right, Grace, what's next? All right, so we're going to go to some <laughs> Twitter questions. And ah, first of all, I just tweeters. want to thank you all dearly for the ginger mother of dragons <laughs> hashtag because that makes me laugh really hard. Um, I'm going to actually... I thought it was mother of ginger dragons. <laughs> mother of ginger dragons. I mean, I've gotten a few variations. I appreciated all of them. Um, so one of them we're going to go with is... <laughs> You're welcome. What it's are ginger dragons? They're uh, just... 
They're, dra- they're just yeah. like extra sassy. Yeah, extra yeah. sassy. Yeah. Really good they in have, martinis. Yeah. yeah. They yeah, have yeah, right, right, ginger right. scented uh, uh, fire breath. Fire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. While you're getting killed, you also get the lovely scent of ginger. Yeah, I just yeah, want yeah, it to yeah. be like a fragrant, uh, pleasant experience. Yes. Um, all right, so guys, from Jonathan Peck, what TV show will not hold up in the next 15 years? Mm. See, mm. we. I think because of technology, a lot of shows kind of get kind of get out yeah like cell yeah. Phones, if it didn't pagers. rely yeah if yeah pagers <laughs> if it didn't I, rely I on loved technology my pager. i feel like i'm gonna get some flack for this but right. i gotta be honest with you part yeah. of me wonders if once this sort of nostalgia for the 90s is over if friends is gonna hold up i don't know my little co- Ooh, my little cousins who were like 12 and 13 live for friends that's interesting they love yeah friends. i think it might do well with a young audience i think for me as an adult i go back and look at friends and i go why did i think that's what life as an adult was going to be like yeah, that's ridiculous sure. <laughs> it definitely was a little bit of a jading <laughs> yeah <right? laughs> like when i got to new york i was like this fucking place blows yeah, exactly. why did they live here no I, new york is fine what i'm saying is that because i just offended like everybody in new york but uh <laughs> It's yeah, friends definitely is like everything's gonna be fine. Yeah. We live in a giant apartment in New York's oh really my nice God, neighborhood. Right, sure. Um but yeah, I think uh I, Friends is actually not a not a terrible call. I was I was gonna say for me, something like uh like the like comedies that were good, but like the office may not hold up in ten or fifteen years. Yeah, simply because Ooh, it's kind of like, I kinda, are we I, I over the like, talking head? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like the mockumentary type style. Yeah. Whereas I feel that something like Parks and Rec is gonna hold up more so than the office because it's a little more because centered it's on isolated. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and centered small on town the, America hasn't that's changed. That's what exactly what it is. Yeah. It's, it's a small town America thing. Yeah, 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 for sure. I wonder if I kind of took this a different direction. I wonder if kind of like the true crime drama is gonna <sighs> like mm. peter out slightly only because and we're I don't mean to like get this dark, but no, I mean I think we're like <laughs> The world is a dark place. Like sometimes, and I lo- like I love Dateline. I love Lisa <laughs> Keith Moore. Like I am literally ninety years old. This is my favorite show in the world. But even there's days when I'm like, oh god, because you read the news and you're like, I don't, I don't have Dateline in me tonight. Right. Or like all the, you know, like Netflix, like The Keepers. I'm watching right now, right. and it's like, oh god, oh, that's this a tough is one. so heavy. Like, yeah. so I wonder because if- I'm watching that Unabomber still. The newest episode came on last night, and that series yeah. is incredible. Mostly because I don't know a ton about the Unabomber and how right. they actually caught him, or the the whole se- like the whole behind the scenes yeah. of catching the Unabomber. And back to like my morbidity, I was See, like. Yeah, He's not that bad, I, but he was a terrible, terrible human being. I, but I, I can see where you're kind of going with I, that a little bit. I do, but yeah, I, I also... Yeah, if it's going to lose, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, I, I remember watching that. It's kind of like, ah. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, I think that if you go even further back in time and pull some really early true crime stories, then you get into the territory of historical stuff. Yeah, yeah which is super fun. Exactly, because because it does have that real history aspect to it yeah and it's not it's it's not like they're like uh too soon yeah you know what I mean? yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know for me mean. like a newsroom was a show that was good at, at the first and kind of came and went with like little fanfare right yeah and i think a show like that won't hold up because it, it like rips from the headlines kind of a situation well yeah it was it was kind of timed perfectly for like the political climate yes. that it came out in that's maybe like too subtle to f- carry on to correct 15 yes. years from yeah. now yeah all right let's do one more um, we're gonna do one more um has anybody on the panel seen the new tv show oh i'm sorry this is from christopher castle has hey, anybody Chris. on the panel seen the new tv show will about william shakespeare pretty good i think it airs on tbs your thoughts i think it's tnt i think it's tnt mostly also. i ignored it um <laughs> because one i hate shakespeare i hate everything about <laughs> the man uh, i hate his plays i hate his writing uh it was confusing wow. and it ruined all of my english classes in all of school <laughs> Um, I, but I mean, I understand the inspiration for like something like 10 things I hate about you or, uh, you know, I don't know. We saw boobs in Romeo and Juliet in school. So that was kind of cool. But, yeah. um, I really am not a fan of Will Shakespeare. And then they sent me a press release and the way they pitched the show was in the punk rock era of 16th century theater, punk rock. Yeah. And the- it even says wow. it in the tagline yeah. on Wikipedia, by yeah. the way, the oh, punk cool. rock thing. Cool. And it yeah. does, in fact, air on TNT. Will Shakespeare is this good looking dude who broods and like writes really confusing plays. William Shakespeare was a, like a heinously hideous man. You stop that. He's <laughs> Joseph Fiennes. And, <laughs> who That's was scrawny, sickly. And the reason he wrote so many damn plays was because he couldn't go out in public himself. Dude was a dork. Don't think that's I'm gonna right. bully don't Shakespeare. Don't I'm bullying Shakespeare. Get out here, Will. A hundred. I'll shove you in a locker. 
<laughs> Sorry, I yelled. Well, I do not share Josh McCuga's opinions <laughs> on William Shakespeare. I Nor do I. I'm a fan of Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare adaptations. I just rewatched the trailer for She's the Man last night. Guys, that is a great movie. <laughs> I love She's the Man. But it does not Twelfth Night. I know that it's an ad, but it doesn't be like, ah, thou how find the uh, Lady Macbeth is. Uh, like, okay, just fucking say the words. <laughs> but that was a direct quote. Lady yes. Macbeth. Is. Lady yeah. Macbeth. It's a great scene. Uh, yeah. So, however, my feelings about Will is, and I haven't given it a chance, to be fair, but. Where there's a will, there's a won't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Cody, hit the oh, spoiler. Oh, God, Bye. I hate you, but I love you so much. <laughs> but you guys. God, killed it. You know, there's this movie. It's called Shakespeare in Love. It won an Academy Award. <laughs> Over Saving Private Fucking Ryan. And Are you kidding me? I, yeah. Sorry I swore like six times, but I'm really angry. But at the same time, w- I feel like Will is not that different from Shakespeare in Love, which was a solid, tight yeah, two-hour movie. Emma, it's the <laughs> punk rock era of Elizabethan theater. How could it not be yeah. the hottest shit ever? Yeah. Sorry, Will. Yeah. I won't be watching your show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I shan't be watching it. I actually think that like TNT has been coming up with like some pretty. Um, Pretty like awesome, awesome stuff. scripted sure. programming like in the past couple. Sinner seasons. was really friggin' good, and I'm really excited to watch another episode of that. Oh, that was oh, USA. that's USA. <laughs> Oops, <it is. laughs> but, um, sunglasses and sunglasses. Uh, but yeah, no, I haven't watched it yet. I love Sha- William Shakespeare. I will, I will check it out. But I also get nervous when people do this kind of stuff because I adore William Shakespeare. I've studied William Shakespeare. Cymbeline's one of my favorite plays of all time. Um, and I don't want them to ruin it. And when punk rock is in the same sentence, I'm like, I don't know. So no, I you have not. Always, I will though. Do you know what always scared me the most about getting into a relationship is that some girl would say, "You know what we should do this weekend? Go to Shakespeare in the Park." And then we would get into a fight, <laughs> and then we would break up over simply oh over idiots in a park reading words that don't make sense. That's a really adorable <laughs> glimpse into your mind, Doug. <laughs> wow, I didn't know it's you. Not, I shouldn't say idiots. Just like a personal you know. vendetta against Will Shakespeare. Oh, I, I, listen, if somebody said, "Did he? Did you he have like a time kill your family in a past yes. life?" <laughs> Yeah, Maybe he killed he all of high school for me because I would have gotten A's in English. I tell you that right now. As soon as we got to Shakespeare, they're like, what do you think of that play? I was like, I don't understand it. I don't get it. <laughs> Titus Andronicus is just based on him slaughtering your family yeah, in yes. another yes, life. That is, a, that is a factual People always ask me. about how William Shakespeare <laughs> killed Josh Pacuca's family. What would you do with a time machine? Like, what, were, what era would you go back to? I would either be a 1980s frat guy or I would go back to 16th century England and beat the shit out of William Shakespeare. I would shove that dude in an Elizabethan locker oh and be like, yo, old Billy Shakespeare over here is in the locker. Let's kick the crap out of him. But then he would like, give you the pox place. and you would die like a yes. slow, terrible death. Would you also it's bring a locker back with you in the time yes. machine? Yeah, I'm bringing a locker See, in the time smart. machine. that's smart. Emma's planning ahead. I like yes. that. I'm sorry I went off on a little bit of a rant. We are going long. Uh, let's get the hell out of here. Before we do, where can the good people find you on the internet, Emma Fife? Uh, I can be found all over the internet wherever Emma Fife's are sold. At my name, Emma Fife, E-M-M-A-F-Y-F-F-E. I'm joining my friend Michelle over on her Twitch stream tonight. That is twitch.tv slash I am Chubby Bunny to make some rainbow grilled cheese and oh, also shit. tomorrow night in Hollywood I will be hosting the premiere of the new fairy tale movie Fairy Tale Dragon Cry which is being released by Funimation. There you go. That uh, was I, I can't top that. Uh, <laughs> you guys can find me everywhere online at Mrs. Grace Face. Boom. Josh McCuga at Josh McCuga Twitter and Instagram the Josh McCuga show on YouTube every day here live. Clatter TV talk. Uh, we skipped a pick of the week. My bad on that pick of the day. We'll do one tomorrow. Uh, we'll be back live tomorrow at 11 a.m. PST myself. Grace Hancock, David Griffin. We'll see you then. Until then, especially on National Book Day, put down that effing book and pick up the remote, especially if it's a Shakespeare novel or play. Novel! If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.